for just a minute, please, and I'd like to share from the Word of God, Proverbs 31, from the Message Bible. A good woman is hard to find and worth far more than diamonds. She's, she is quick to assist anyone in need. She reaches out to help the poor. When she speaks, she has something worthwhile to say, and she always says it kindly. Somebody say kindness. 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 She keeps an eye on everyone in her household, and she keeps them all busy and productive. Her children respect and bless her. Her husband joins in the words of praise, saying, Many women have done wonderful things, but you've outclassed them all. Charm can mislead and beauty soon fades, but the woman to be admired and praised is a woman who lives in the fear of the Lord. To live in the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and placing our confidence in God is the foundation for blessing. The world blessed means happy, fortunate, and to be envied. Blessed women are spiritually and practically devoted to God, and this devotion permeates every area and relationship in their lives. Aren't you grateful for Karen this morning? <laughs> what a blessed woman, and what a blessed woman I am. He was my God, he is my God, he's always going to be my Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. As my dear friend George Francie just said, there's nothing like being moved in your life circumstances to help you figure out that you need to know the Savior, amen, and that you need to rely upon the Savior. He wants to be all that we lack in this world, and he becomes our strength and our standby, our friend and help in trouble. Let's uh, meet this morning for a word of prayer as we bow our hearts together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you make a way for us to know you. Now, we've always been known by you, Lord, but you make a way for us to know you. Thank you for the sweet fellowship that is available to every human heart made possible by the Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, for those of us who are gathered here who know Jesus and are seeking to live in connection to him and, and to live by your word, we just thank you for this yet another day to do so. If there's anyone here this morning, Lord, that hasn't really taken that step to know Jesus, to accept his forgiveness from sin and to live in his righteous love and life, I pray today would be their day. They just reach out for you. You give us such a gift, God, and so many times we can either be ignorant of the gift or just haven't really opened our eyes to see more clearly thank you Holy Spirit that you are the one who removes the scale of, 
of uh, misunderstanding and ignorance from our eyes and you help us to see that you are always with us you've never left us or forsaken us and that even when our life goes through trying times God that you use that as a way to just draw us closer to you you just want more of us God it's always about you loving more of us so help us to press through this morning Many of us gathered in this room, Father, have tasted what it means to be human mothers. But God, you have always been, from the beginning of time, interested in spiritual mothers. So help us explore this today as we celebrate motherhood. In Jesus' name, amen. From the beginning of time, women were created to bring life, to give birth to the matters of the heart, if you will. Women are made in the image of God, and God placed within women this precious desire, this drive to be known and valued in relationships. Am I telling the truth, sisters? Yep. There is this portrait of God placed within us because God desires truly, above all things, to be known and valued in his relationships to all of humanity. He blesses us when we press in to know him. God's purpose for women is that we become portraits of his holy blessing. As I mentioned earlier, a blessed woman is spiritually and practically devoted to God, and this devotion to God in, is seen and reflected uh, in the lives of women when we are participants of that grace. For those of us who are, uh, we're here today to celebrate Mother's Day, and for those of us gathered here, men and women, who were raised by a woman who was devoted to God and spent her life seeking to reflect God's holy image to you, please take a moment and say, I am blessed. For those of you men gathered here today, I want you to gain a greater revelation of who God created women to be and start cherishing her as an image of God. Birthing life as God designed takes men and women. For those of you women gathered here who have chosen to raise children in the love and admonition of the Lord, I celebrate you. <clears throat> be a portrait of God's holy love to your children. Please take a moment and pray, Lord, make me a blessing to them. For those of you women who did not experience a loving mother who was devoted to God, nor did his holiness permeate her relationship with you, please take a moment to pray, Lord, I am blessed to be known by you, and I forgive her. Which is a hard thing to do, isn't it? God makes it possible. I want you to get a, a revelation today that the Spirit of God's holy love is your true spiritual mother. God desires to become all that you have lacked, in a human mother. He does so all the time. I watch God work through other people. He brings in even sometimes total strangers with that spirit of, of life-giving motherhood, spiritual motherhood, to surround people who haven't had what God intended for them to have. Have you watched that? He is a good and providing God. Today I speak to all women, not just to those who have given birth or chosen to raise children in their home. I speak to women who desire to be known and valued in every relationship. I speak to women who are willing to be an instrument of God's grace, to permeate those relationships for God's purpose. I speak to women who understand being a spiritual mother who imparts spiritual life is the highest calling of any woman, one that God gives alone. When this understanding drives us, we have chosen to embrace a mother's image, a portrait of God's holiness. A wise woman, according to Proverbs 31.10, seeks to know God and live in fellowship with the living God who alone knows her heart and longs to guide her in the steps to bless others. Remember, we are blessed to be a blessing. <clears throat> My story. <laughs> For those of you who attend Connect to Christ, that ought to be a pretty clear picture for you. I have a mother who has been that instrument of God's grace to me from the time of my first breath. I am a recipient of God's holy blessing 
through her. But my mother has many, many other spiritual children. I'm a biological mother to two amazing sons, and I have sought to pass the holy blessing along to them. I pray one day they pass that blessing on to others. But please understand that I am a spiritual mother to many others. Scripture portrays many spiritual mothers and tells their story of living in the image of God. There are feminine qualities to the character of God, and a lot of people forget that. <clears throat> Let's look at a few of them and see what we can learn about being portraits of God's holiness. God created spiritual mother Eve, didn't he? Her name actually means life spring. She was blessed to be a helper, the mother of all the living. She had no real role model, no mother, no father that we know of, but she was made in the image of God. She's a portrait of God's holiness as our helper. The spirit of the living God is called our helper. Did you know that? He longs to be our helper in life. He always makes the journey with us. When we take Jesus as our Savior, we get the impartation of God's Holy Spirit, and we get to walk out in every day with our steps being guided by the Holy Spirit. Are you grateful? And are you blessed? We extend ourselves as uh, spiritual mothers when we seek to be helpers in the lives of others. Are you a helper? Because being a helper to the work of God is holy. Genesis 21, 1 through 8, and even mentioned in Hebrews 11, 11, God loves to take our natural minds on a journey so that we can embrace the supernatural love of God. God's love is the purest of blessings, and the lives of Abraham and Sarah tell such a story. God created spiritual mother Sarah, and her name means princess or noble woman. She was blessed to be patient. Do you like being blessed to be patient? You gritting your teeth right now? I love being patient, right? <laughs> but Sarah was the patient mother of Israel. She waited 90 years to be a mother. She thought God had forgotten his promise to her, and in her old age, she conceived a son, and they named him Isaac, which translates laughter. She said, oh my gosh, God made me laugh. <laughs> She's a portrait of God's holiness and faith. Even though Sarah struggled to get beyond human perspective, taking things into her own hands a couple of times, if you remember that story, she did press on and she reveals to us the God of the impossible. Do you want your God to be the most high God, the God of the impossible? He is amazing. Her faith took some twists and turns, but then can't we all identify with Miss Sarah? Being patient and waiting for God's plans to manifest is holy. So when you help other people in their, in their time of waiting for the promises of God to be revealed and manifest, you are operating in the holiness of God. Exodus 2, 1 through 10. The nation of Israel was so blessed of God, they became a threat to Egypt, who wanted to keep them in bondage. So Pharaoh chose to kill the Hebrew male babies. A man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant, and she bore a son. She made an ark out of a basket, made it waterproof, placed the baby in the ark, and it floated down the river, only to be rescued by Pharaoh's daughter. The baby would be named Moses because he was drawn out of the water. God created the spiritual mother, Jochebed, and her name means God's glory. She was blessed to be a rescuer, the mother of Moses. Moses would be the giver of the law. Jochebed had to surrender her child to the Lord's providence, otherwise he would have been murdered. 
God had plans for Moses, and Jochebed modeled the first rescue of God. She rescued him from death so that he could rescue Israel from bondage. She's a portrait of God's holy deliverance and salvation. It must have been incredibly difficult for Jochebed to give up her child and trust God the way she did. Does that mess with your head just a little bit? Put your baby in a basket, float it down the river. Can't imagine. But she trusted God. Being a participant in God's plan of salvation for human life is holy. Samuel, 2 Samuel 11, 2 <coughs> through 12, verse 24. The relationship between David and Bathsheba didn't start well. Let's look at that. Women had very few rights in ancient time, but God chose a woman to be a blessing, and he did so even in the midst of poor choices. Scripture teaches Bathsheba was faithful to God and to David. God created spiritual mother Bathsheba. Her name means daughter of the oath. In other words, loyal. Loyal. She was blessed to be the mother of wisdom. She was the mother of Solomon. She was loyal to ensure that her second son, Solomon, ruled after King David died. She had to press beyond the evil intentions of David's first son, Absalom. She's a portrait of God's holy wisdom for interpreting life. Being loyal to God's family and speaking his wisdom into the lives of others is holy. Do you want to be a portrait of God's holiness in your loyalty? Luke 1, 13 through 45. Living righteous before God is always the precursor to the blessing. An angel appeared to Zechariah and told him he and his wife would have a child. He struggled to believe and it cost him his voice for a while. <clears throat> God's blessing surprised them both. God created spiritual mother Elizabeth. And her name translates, Oath of God. She's blessed to be a mother of God's provision. She was the mother of John the baptizer. Elizabeth's story is much like Sarah's. She was beyond childbearing years, and her husband Zechariah was old. And through the grace of God, Elizabeth conceived and bore a son, John. Elizabeth never became bitter. Never. She held on to her faith, and she held on to God's promise. John would be the prophet who would prepare the heart of humanity for the coming Messiah, who would take people into an intimate relationship with God. You see a progression? She's a portrait of God's holy provision for the plan of eternal salvation. God saved a people in the human realm. But his real goal forever has been to save them for an eternal realm. Being strong to hold on to promises, even in the face of certain disappointments, is holy. I want you to remember that you need to encourage others to hold on to God's promises. This life, it chips away at your hope, doesn't it? We need that spirit that spiritual mother, if you will, of Elizabeth, that spirit, to keep us strong and to help us hang on. God is the provider. And being, and being a woman who trusts God is holy. <clears throat> Luke 1, 38-55. Another mother. God always uses the world's least expected people to be bearers of his grace. Have you ever noticed that? Scripture does teach that. It says that God delights to take the things that the world would just throw away and make them trophies of his grace. I always tell people, in light of that scripture, I am a zero. I'm a zero. 
But God saw fit to raise a simple housewife into a new role. How awesome is that? Amen? If God can do it for this simple lady here, he can do it for you. You better watch out because God always has plans and it's in a spiritual dimension. And if you participate, he will absolutely exceed your wildest dreams. Mary has a visit from an angel. She's told that even as a single woman, she who has never been with a man, she's going to give birth to the Son of God. I'm sure her mouth just went seriously. <laughs> she would experience great pain emotionally, but she would be blessed to be the mother of the Messiah. Mary would taste rejection and pain. It would cost her a lot to stay in this place of faith with God. God created spiritual mother Mary. Her name actually translates two different ways. It translates bitterness and exalted of God. And Mary reveals to us that rather than to be bitter with life situations and circumstances, we can all use the things that we don't understand, we can't comprehend with our human mind, and we can step up and be exalted of God for an eternal purpose. Mary modeled it well. She was blessed to be the mother of grace. You know, grace is God's riches at Christ's expense, right? We get a chance to live in the grace of God because of Jesus and because of the obedience of Mary. She would be the mother of the Savior. Elizabeth and Mary shared a visit with both of, uh, they shared a visit between the both of them when they were pregnant. And Elizabeth said to Mary, and she knew this by direct revelation from the Spirit of the living God, blessed are you and highly favored are you, Mary, above all women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Can I tell you that our heart is a womb for the living Lord? And if we will allow Jesus to grow and develop within our hearts and that holiness to permeate our being, we can be spiritual vessels of grace every day. Do you want to be a vessel of grace? It isn't just limited to mothers. It's for all of humanity. It translates across the board. <coughs> Elizabeth and Mary shared a, a blessing from the Lord with regard to the impartation of, of a baby. But God came as a baby to our hearts, amen? And we get a chance to be a part of letting him grow and develop in us. <coughs> Mary's experienced the blessing of God because she was willing to submit to God and submit to enduring the suffering. She is a portrait of God's holy intention to create spiritual children. As women, we're not limited to this human body to create life. We have a Savior, and he is, he is the life. He tells us in his word, he is the life. When we participate in connecting others to Christ, we are holy. Do you like your name of your church? Connect to Christ. Amen. <coughs> Mary was a woman of amazing strength and obedience, to God, and when we operate in God's strength and live obedient to his will, we are holy. See, a mother's image is God's portrait for holiness because our world actually really does need to see God. <laughs> we all need holy examples, don't we? We all need a holy example in our life, and God makes a way to bring a holy example to us. But then we have this chance to be holy examples. And may we take from these women who are spiritual mothers in the word of God, may we take those principles for living, and we let that make us women of noble character, of wisdom, and of love. May we allow the spirit of God to make us holy examples for the lives around us. Amen? We get a chance to do that. And a lot of people minimize that. And in a world where 
it doesn't take much to make a bunch of babies anymore, does it? I see it all the time. But I'll tell you what, I'm looking for God to bring back the heart of the mother and develop the heart of God's kids because they're terribly off track right now. So may we all put on the spirit of motherhood and love the people around us and make a difference, at least in this corner of the world. Amen? Amen. Let's stand and sing. Shall we sing a closing song? of peace. From the beginning of time, from that first mama, Eve, through Mary, all God really wanted to do was to impart the perfection of his holiness into the human heart and allow it to grow. And you get a chance from this moment forward to keep that first and foremost in your mind. See, if we live with eternal goals in mind, you know, like we're kind when we don't feel like being kind and we're patient when we don't feel like being patient and we wait and don't become bitter. And if God just says, I'm going to take you through all the steps but you really can know my holiness and you really can operate the way I created you to operate the beginning of time. I want to be the image of a spiritual mother because women were created to be spiritual mothers for God's kids. So ladies, I do celebrate you and happy Mother's Day. But I challenge you, you go beyond that biological or just that physical connection. Let's just call it that because some of you may have amazing ch children you've adopted. or Maybe you don't have any. But God doesn't leave things there. It's always going to be about eternal principles and eternal children. So you get a chance to be a part of that. Make your choice to really make a difference. Because this world really does need a glimpse of Jesus Christ. He is the Savior. He is love. And he is the Lord of all. And whether or not people live for him doesn't change any of it. I want to be one that chooses to live in the blessings of God. Are you blessed? Amen. All right. Well, then, if you're blessed because you know the Savior, you go and be a blessing. I wish you all a blessed day today. Going. God goes with you.